Hey, it's Darla here. Now, this could be a little political content here, but it's about women. I want to say a few years ago, I designed a t-shirt and said, women are not baby mills. I still have the t-shirt. And the reason I say that is because of what was going on at the time here in America for women. You know, our rights were being stripped away. And I get it. You may not agree with abortion, but you should agree to a woman's choice to an abortion. Just me personally, I would never have gotten an abortion. I never thought of an abortion. It just never crossed my mind. That doesn't mean that the next woman who doesn't want a child or has medical difficulties shouldn't have an abortion. You know, they're taking away our right to choose. And if you take away our right to choose, that's our freedom. Because freedom is choices. Without freedom, we have no choices. Or with no choices, no freedom. You know, come on. They're trying to dictate to us how they want us to be. And that's why I say we are not baby mills. We're not here to just produce, 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 produce babies and kill ourselves in the process. Anyway, the world is overpopulated. So women shouldn't even be focused on having a bunch of babies. I understand a lot of women want to go through uh, having a baby to raise a child. Okay, but there's a lot of women that don't want to do that. I have always said that a woman who vocally tells people, I do not want to be pregnant, I do not want a child, I do not want a baby, I'm only about myself, I want to do things, and I don't want no children. Or some women choose that life. As a, why should we knock them for that? And why, if it she accidentally gets pregnant, because we know all our protection is not 100%. She gets pregnant, she's already vocally told everybody she does not want a baby. I don't want her to have that baby. Because if she has it set in her heart and mind that she don't want no children, being pregnant and having a child is not going to change that. And I always worry about the child being abused or neglected. When you vocally tell people you don't want to do this and then you're in a situation that you have to do it, people should already know you're your uh, stand on it. Plus, there's so many women that have medical problems. They want babies. They're stay-at-home moms, which they stay at home because women's liberation. We said you could choose. You could choose to stay at home or you could go and work. There's a lot of women now that choose to stay home. But I also see a lot of women that are killing their babies and killing themselves. They have two or three kids and they're killing all of them. you got to really think of what you're doing to women when you keep telling them, look, if you're going to have sex, you're going to get pregnant. And if you get pregnant, you're going to have to have the baby. No ifs, ends, or anything about it. You know, either that's a couple things going to happen. Women are just going to quit having sex. Or they're just going to go behind closed doors and do an abortion themselves. You know, they've done it way before abortions were legal. So uh, I'm sure they would continue doing it, finding ways to abort. This isn't the first time that... Our society has tried to make baby mills out of women. I think the first time that I'm, I'm paying attention to is back in Jamestown. Yes, when we first planted our feet in this land, Jamestown, named after the King of England, James, King James. You had all these men come that invaded these shores and took the land for the natives. In fact, when Europeans came here, what did they do? They replaced the native population. And that's why I think a lot of uh, MAGA Republicans are scared about migration because they know they did that before. Their ancestors did that. They just, re they tried to replace the whole country with European and get rid of native people. I mean, come on, you guys don't remember that? And I think that's why now they're so scared that that's going to happen to them because they, they've already seen it happen. They already know how to do that. But after Jamestown and we had all these men, they were like, oh, we need some women. So they started uh, you know, attracting women there, either by money, land. Uh, they kidnapped women. But when the women came here, it was like they were so strong on that we need uh, labor that they were like, these women would have to have babies. They got to have babies, babies, babies. They said that there were so many deaths of babies 
in that time period there because, you know, it's harsh conditions anyway. And if a woman gets pregnant, when she has the baby, it takes a year. Now think about that. One year for your body inside to get back in shape. And, you know, because you have your baby in the belly and it pushes everything out of the way so it can grow. And once the baby comes, all that stuff has to go back. It takes a year. So if you get pregnant back to back, you risk damaging your your body. But they didn't care. They would have, get, you know, there was no birth control back in those, nothing. Unless the guys were out hunting for a month and, and gone. <laughs> but these women had babies like every year. Every two years, they were having a, a baby. A lot of women died because of that. You know, there was a group of ships that came from England to go to Jamestown. On the ship was a pregnant woman. She had to be between five and seven months pregnant. She's on the ship for like a couple of months. They run into a hurricane and the captain ends up uh, either purposely or accidentally runs into these rocks. All the people were saved. They all swam to shore. Even this pregnant woman. She's in a hurricane. She gets in a wreck. She's got to swim, excuse me, to shore. The island they were at was Bermuda. Bermuda. The baby was the first European baby born there. They were there. This group of people were there for nine months. They built three ships. One was kind of out of the wreckage, and then they built, cut down trees and built two more. And they went on to Jamestown. Now from the island to Jamestown, you know, her baby dies and then she ends up dying. So she comes all the way over there carrying a baby. And within a year, let's say, she loses her baby and she ends up dying because it was hard. If you've known any woman that's pregnant, or I'm sure you've heard stories that pregnant women eat for two people, they say, well, well I'm eating for two people. Well, that's true because the baby's constantly taken from the mama because it, you know, it's down here in your belly. So it's like, hey, I'm going to take this nutrition because I need to grow. And if you're not feeding yourself or have profit, proper diet, you know, it's going to harm your, it's going to make everything weak. Your baby weak, you weak. That's what we call harsh conditions. So that was kind of the first time we started like a baby meal. You know, it was just, they just didn't care. They wanted all this labor force. Eventually they got slaves. And, uh, you know, right there in Jamestown, they had slaves. Because they were trying to, uh, you know, you figure all these guys, they, they were, never mind, I'm not going to that story. <laughs> the other time I feel like uh, we were kind of like a baby mill is after World War II. Now, I'm a product of that baby mill. We're called baby boomers. You know, all the guys are gone. When they come back from war, Women have no birth control. Women got married. They had babies. My mom had six babies, six of us kids, and we're two to three years apart. The first of, she had the first two kind of like back to back, and then there's a five-year gap from me. My mom and dad separated. They divorced. Then a year before I was born, they remarried. So that's why that was such a big gap. But after that, her kids are every three years, two years, three years, like that. They just kept having kids. You know, and that's why we're called the baby boomers because so many kids were born between X amount of years. X. So I really worry about that. Here we are once again in the year 2024, and it's like 600 years since Columbus gave them the directions of how to get over here. And we're still treating women like they're a piece of crap. I mean, I just don't get it. You might say, well, you know, there's a lot of women that follow these guys. Yeah, and I call them sissy asses. I mean, guys, I almost could understand where they're coming from because guys don't understand women at all. They think they do. They might help us and do, they may be kind to us and everything. I'm not talking about guys that are good guys. I'm talking about MAGA. They want to be called MAGA. This is what I'm going to call them. MAGA people want to treat women like we're crappy. And I, I don't understand why. Like I said, if there's women that are following these guys, then this is my own opinion. My own opinion is that maybe as a woman, she sees all these powerful men and she wants to She's so upset that she's a woman and not a powerful man, that she wasn't born a man. I mean, why would you hate so much your own sex, a woman? Why would you hate yourself like that and allow a man to do that? 
to other women. If he's doing it to other women, what's he thinking of you? Because, right? Because he thinks that about women and you're a woman. <laughs> he's just going to love you and say, oh, you're okay because you're my wife, but the hell with all these other women. No, he's he really deep down thinks that about you too. Or these women, it's a financial thing, you know, because I've always noticed that like you have these mafia guys and bad guys and killers. you got a serial killer maybe in prison. And these women, oh, I want to marry you. Oh. And I'm thinking, you know, all these bad, all men, no matter if they're bad or good, will have a woman attached to them. There's a few that don't. There's a few women that don't get attached to these guys. But everywhere you look, they have a, a woman with them. So I don't know. These women get caught up in this? Do they know? You know, I watched The Godfather. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, they said they kind of kept it away from their wife and stuff, but I'm sure their wife knew that they were the mafia. And once they found out, I'm sure they were like, mm, I can't really say a whole lot because they're like a king. They'll kill off their wife. They don't care. Do they get caught up in this stuff with the money and then they find out later he's a bad guy and they, you know, they just want to stay. I don't know. You know, we would have to talk to these women. We would have to get past the fact that they want to put down women all the time when they are a woman. Like, I, I'm not going to put down five foot three women, five foot three people. I'm five foot three. So why should I talk bad about a five foot three person? Because that's what I am. So why would I talk bad about a woman or follow a, a dumbass man that wants to take all my rights away as a woman. It just boils my blood, you know, because I seen in the 70s, you know, how we changed everything, how women got liberated. You don't know, you don't understand being liberated. The first thing when we got liberated women, we, well, a couple things. We started enjoying sex because we had birth control and we could just be in the moment and not, not worry about being pregnant. That was number one. Number two was our clothing changed. We weren't even allowed to wear pants. We had a certain look that women had to go by. And sure, you, you say 50s, 60s, eh, style was changed a little bit. Women still couldn't really wear pants. Style was one of the things we changed, was the big change. I mean, we had a mini skirt, we had a midi skirt, and we had a maxi. You could wear any length of skirt you wanted. It was heaven. We could wear jeans and a t-shirt. We could go with no bra. It was just liberating that we could finally be us. We could have our hair any way we wanted. You know, let it go natural, put it up, let it flow, cut it short. Any way we wanted, we could be that. And they just want to take that away from us. By not giving us birth control or anything like that, women are not going to want to have sex anymore. It's going to be forced upon them. They're not going to be able to enjoy it because there's always that thing, well, I'm going to get pregnant, I'm going to have to have this baby, even though I don't want one. You're going to find women that may not get married until later on in life because they don't want to have, I don't know, it looks really dreary for women unless we stand up and fight these crazy people that want to take away our rights. I just, it just blows my mind. And when I hear them talk on TV, I'm like, really? Do you really listen to what you're saying about women? I heard a guy the other day say, oh, oh well, you know, we don't have enough adopt, uh, babies to adopt. So, Women don't need to be having abortions. We still think there's too much abortions going on because we don't have babies to adopt. Now they're telling you, oh, all those a baby that were aborted, they could be in your workforce. Oh, yeah, you know, because we like taking kids and putting them in the workforce <laughs> because we have nobody to work. They're, they're, they're sad, sad people. I hate to say it, but they are. These are, and, and you know, what gets me? What really gets me is when you look out there at the MAGA people, they're all baby boomers. They know what a dictator is. We fought World War II because of dictators. Dictators. And we have a guy saying, oh, I'm just joking, joking. Oh, on the first day, only on the first day I'll be a dictator. <laughs> That's not a joke. You know what Hitler did to the Jewish women? They would make them strip naked and shave off all the hair and parade them around like that. Why? To make women feel like crap. These men were vicious. And for anybody 
to say, well, you know, the Nazis and the Nazis and the Nazis, you know, F the Nazis. They treated women like shit. They didn't, they didn't care about women. And in their mind, a Jewish woman was crap, even though she's just a woman. Just because she believes religiously different than you, you're going to uh, act like she's crappy, that you could just shoot her in the back of the head, throw her in her grave with her nude body. It's sad. It's sad that these people stand up there and say that. It's sad that these people stand up there and say, well... You know, we're getting replaced. You're damn right we're going to replace your ass because if I could replace all of them, I would. I'd get them all the hell out of here because we don't need that kind of crap around here. You know, I get my heart rate all worked up, but women, we must stay strong. We must stay strong. We need to fight in every state. We need to fight them. I'm an old lady now. I'm still trying to fight the best way I can by coaching you guys. Let's get it going, girls, women, all of us, all women, even women that want to be male and males that want to be female, all of them. Because you notice anytime a male wants to be a female or associates with female, they cannot stand it. They, they want to, they have so much hate for that. And I think because in their mind, male is the dominant partner. And if you're born male and you want to give that up to be a female that we're trying to destroy, why would you do that? And I think that's why they hate them so much. They cannot understand. Well, their mind, they think they choose to be a woman. So they can't understand that. They're not as hard on a woman that wants to be a male. She could play football. She could do anything she wants. And they're not that critical of her. I, I, I just don't get it. They have so much hate for us women. Now look at me. Why would anybody want to hate the, hate me? Why? Just because I got a pudding cane instead of a ding-a-ling. Makes you wonder.